In this video, I'm gonna take you through how to install QuickBooks. I'm doing it in the QuickBooks Enterprise uh, 2016 or 16.0 edition, um, but this is, it's pretty standard for any version of QuickBooks, how this works. Okay, so the first thing that you're, you are going to want to do is you're gonna go either to your Intuit uh, login online, so your Intuit site, and you'll have access to your uh, license number Okay, so myaccount.intuit.com. And then once you're there, you can sign in to your account and you should be able to find your licenses that you have. Uh, if you've purchased from somebody like us, you should have received an email with your license number and as well as your product code. And so you can use those numbers there instead of having to log in online. Sometimes logging in online through the Intuit site in, when you log into your account, you're going to see all history of any any uh, licenses that have been tied to you. So if you upgrade every year, um, or if you upgrade every couple years, or you've been using QuickBooks for 20 years, you might see a lot of accounts licenses in there. So sometimes it's better just to ask. Um, all right, so you can find your license number there. Once you have your license number, what you want to do is you want to go to uh, community.intuit.com. Okay, and once you're here again, in some of the other, vid other videos we've gone through this, you want to make sure that you're looking at the right product. So obviously we're not downloading QuickBooks online right now, so I'm going to change this. And we're doing QuickBooks Desktop for Windows. Okay, and then once I have that QuickBooks Desktop for Windows, you can scroll down usually under the additional resources over here. It has downloads and updates. Okay. And here's another tricky part, right? So now it's looking for QuickBooks Pro 2016. So if that's the product that you're trying to install, you would choose that. I'm actually going to be trying to install QuickBooks Enterprise. Well, let's see. <laughs> this is always a little confusing. Yeah, okay. Because they have QuickBooks for Accountant and there's QuickBooks Premier Accountant, right? Um, and there's also QuickBooks Enterprise accountant edition. So I just wanted to make sure to choose the right one there. Um, so the accountant usually here, QuickBooks accountant, is generally the premier, but I wanted to make sure it didn't have it listed somewhere else in there for enterprise. Okay, so now when I'm in here, I can see that I can download uh, QuickBooks Enterprise 16 by clicking the download button. One thing that's really nice about doing this way, I know so many people get tied to their CDs. Eh, we sell a lot of CDs, <laughs> or we ship a lot of CDs, not sell them necessarily. Uh, but when you download from the website, you're downloading the latest rev, okay? When you install from a CD, you're installing rev one, and then you have to download, or Rev2 maybe, you know, depends on what was released live. And then you have to download any updates to get to the latest Rev, right? So it, you, have, you end up downloading anyway. You might as well just start here and download from the get-go instead of installing from the CD and downloading updates. It's just faster. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start my download. There we go. <laughs> so it tells me Enterprise Accountant 2000 or Accountant 16. So I'm choosing that one. Um, again, that's because I'm an accountant. I'm a consultant for for Enterprise. Most of our customers, of course, would just be downloading Enterprise 16. Okay. So the difference here is when you download Enterprise 16, you'll have the options to choose: Is this manufacturing wholesale? Is this contractor edition? Are you a nonprofit? Right. Whereas in Enterprise Accountant 16, you're installing the Accountants Edition. Okay. And now, of course, as we've covered in other videos, one thing that's really important to note as well is that in Enterprise now, the Accountant features are available in all and in, in any version of Enterprise. You don't have to have the Accountant features here. So the things like mass reclassifying transactions. Uh, being able to mass delete transactions, um, you know, writing off AR, writing off AP, those kinds of things that accounts used to only be able to do, you can do in the regular version of QuickBooks Enterprise now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click this. So it's first going to download my setup. So it's set up 
QuickBooks Enterprise 16, and it has that little icon. So when you look at it on your desktop, you're going to see my messy <laughs> desktop here. When you look at it on your, oh, I'm sorry, it didn't download to my desktop. It downloaded to my downloads folder. When you look at it, though, you're going to see that little icon, okay? And it, it went really fast, right? Um, that's because this is actually the install file that we downloaded. Then, then we're going to have to download the actual I'm sorry, this is the setup file that we downloaded. Then we have to download the actual install file. So I'm going to click on this and hit run. Okay, so now it downloads the install file. And that could take a little bit of time depending on your internet speed. Um, I'm in Austin and we happen to have Gigafiber out here through Google and AT&T. Um, so we have pretty quick speeds here. But I'm going to go ahead and pause the video as this continues to download so you don't have to sit here while we watch it. Okay, so it went past that stage and now it's loading the installer. Now the installation process for QuickBooks did change in 2016 and they, they went and made it much easier. Okay, the first step is to agree to the license agreement, right? So you can read through the terms of your license agreement. One of the biggest things that I get questions on around the license agreement with Intuit is how many users I can have. So let's say I have five users, a five user enterprise file or a five user premier file or three user pro, right? Because that's the max that pro goes to. Um, if I have five people that need to access my QuickBooks Pro file, uh, can I have a three user license still? Or if I have seven people who need to access, can I use a five user license still? So we'll, we'll focus on the five users. Can I use a three, three user license? So QuickBooks polices it, right, um, based on how many times you install it because you have to register the software. And obviously if you go install a three user license on 20 computers and register it, that's going to you know, flag <laughs> somewhere. Uh, also, so I have had a couple customers before, right? Like they did an install and then within six months, they changed over their entire server system and computers and had to reinstall again, um, all 10 or 15 licenses and that flagged, right? We got a hold on the account. We had to call into it for support, let them know what was happening and they released it. But of course it triggered somewhere on their systems. Um, but the license agreement itself is, it says it's per user, right? So when you set up a user inside of QuickBooks that they're considered to be a user. So if you need five users to access your QuickBooks file, right? And you have a three user license, that means only three can be at one time. But if you set up five users inside of QuickBooks, technically you should have a five user QuickBooks file. Now. In some ways that, you know, there's a little gray areas there, right? Your accountant or pro advisor isn't considered a user because it's a pro advisor. Um, you do get a server install generally with enterprise that's considered. So if your IT person only logs in on the server, they're not really considered a user. And then that would get you down to your three users. But, you know, the pro advisor and the in IT person probably are only accessing QuickBooks maybe once a month right? But if you're looking for everyday use, you should have a license per user according to the agreement. Okay. All right. So I'm going to accept the terms of the license agreement and hit next. Now at this stage is where you're going to put in your license and product number. If you have your previous editions of QuickBooks Enterprise, so let's say you had 15.0 as an example, the license number carries forward and, and product numbers carry forward and you probably don't need to fill anything in because it'll fill it in for you. Because what it's doing is it recognizes, right, I have other editions of QuickBooks on this computer and it recognizes those other editions and pulls the license number. Okay, so it should be a uh, 15 digit license number and then a six digit product number here. So you basically just start filling it in and it'll take you, right? Obviously don't put the dashes in, the dashes are there. Okay, and start filling in the information. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill mine in here. And then I hit the next button there. Okay, so now you have some options here. I'll be using QuickBooks on this computer. 
Okay, so what that's, this means is that if you have your QuickBooks file on the server and you have QuickBooks just loaded locally on your computer, right? So everybody in the office has QuickBooks on their computer and they're going to be networked to the server, which is going to hold the file. Then you want to say, I'll be using QuickBooks on this computer. Okay, this does not install. Um, this does not install the QuickBooks uh, file. Let me show you what it is. So under QuickBooks, the database server manager. Okay, so doing that way, you don't install the database server manager. The server manager allows for multi-user access to the file, right? So if it's just me at my computer and I'm in the accounting department, you know, I'm a payables person, I don't need to have access, I don't need to host the file in multi-user access. I'm only going to be accessing the file on the network. So you just say I'm going to use QuickBooks on this computer. If you're going to be installing it on a server, the way that I recommend installing it is to say, I'll be using QuickBooks on this computer and I'll be storing it on this computer. Now, most likely you're never going to be logged into the server and using QuickBooks, right? But if you have to update your database manager or if you have to do any kind of troubleshooting or anything like that, a lot of times they want you to do the troubleshooting on the, on the computer where the file is located. So it's best if you can install QuickBooks there, you never have to use it if, if you never have any problems, but also install the database server manager there. Okay, so the third option says, I will not be using QuickBooks on the computer, I'm just storing it here. So this will install the server manager, but it will not install a local application of QuickBooks. So you won't be able to open QuickBooks and do anything inside of QuickBooks if you just do the third option. And again, if, if you ever have any problems, which any database has problems, right? It's not starting off on a, on a negative foot. Every database, you have some repairs that you have to do. Uh, and so if you have, if you don't have QuickBooks on the computer, it's, it's most likely that, that when you have to troubleshoot in the future, you'll have to install it anyway. So might as well just start with option two. Okay, so this is saying where do we want to um, install the, the QuickBooks file, right? Or the QuickBooks application. So the standard location is just fine. There's not really a reason to change that. That's not where your company file is going to be located necessarily. That's just where the local application will run from. Okay. Usually I say it's better to leave it in the standard file where it sticks it because that way, again, if we have to troubleshoot anything on your computer, it's easy to find, right? Because we know where it is. You also have the ability at this point, oh, I'm sorry, let me just say, if you didn't want to store it in the natural location that it chooses, you could browse and store it somewhere else. But again, I recommend just leaving it there. If you did need to, or if you did have a previous version of QuickBooks on your computer, you can choose to replace the previous version with the version you're installing now, right? So it's saying, do you want to replace Accountant Edition 13.0 with 16.0? Now, if this is your first time moving up, so let's say you are in a previous edition, 13, 15, whatever it is, and you're moving into 16.0, I actually don't recommend replacing it just in case we have any issues, right? So I recommend that what you do is you install the latest edition, so 16.0, and then you work in it for a couple weeks, month, whatever it is, and then go back and uninstall those previous editions after the fact, after we know we're up and moving. Because you'd hate to install 16.0, overwrite the edition that's on there, something happens, I don't know, maybe the server can't be updated or, you know, something happens and we have to go back and install 13.0 again, right? So just install it just as is, don't replace, and then go back later and replace it. Okay, and then you're going to hit install, and I had to skip over that screen, of course, because it has our license data, which of course we can't share on our videos here. So now it's going to go through the installation process. QuickBooks does give us, you know, some some little tips along the way here that you can read, right? Um, or you can just let the installation carry on. And just a little note here while this is installing. So Intuit does have a ProAdvisor program. You've heard me talk about it a little bit and it's a great program uh, if you're wanting to consult in the QuickBooks world. Um, 
the what you know the ProAdvisor program is heavily focused around use of QuickBooks in different scenarios um, and you know product knowledge right navigation within the product which a lot of our videos cover as well but it doesn't go as much into the why right so why would a customer use this versus you know that way or you know how can we almost what I call break QuickBooks right use QuickBooks in a way that it's not meant to be used to get to the result we want so that's where it we come in to play right in our training videos we talk a lot about the whys the scenarios when customers of ours of mine even have used this option or this direction in QuickBooks um, to help them further in their in their uh, reporting needs or in making business decisions. Uh, we also focus heavily on the accounting behind QuickBooks, right? So the debits and the credits and what it means because understanding what the system is doing is also incredibly helpful for being able to you know, break QuickBooks, like I said. Um, it's, it's helpful to be able to know if I do this, what is the result gonna be? So a little bit different. Okay, so we've successfully installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and say open QuickBooks. And then it will of course take you to this no company open screen. Um, and you can go ahead and open up your QuickBooks files. Okay, so that's how you install QuickBooks on a desktop.